the race out east is as tight as it gets, as Philly's now just half a game back of Miami for the number one seed. The Sixers are now an impressive 10-3 since Daryl Morey's trade for Harden, as the two-man statistical prominence of James and Joel, plus the speedy playmaking shot creator Tyrese Maxey, and an all-defensive first-team caliber 3-and-D wing in Mathief Thibel has been too nasty of a mix for most opponents. Considering Ben Simmons has still yet to play for the Brooklyn Nets, while the beard continues to make Philly resemble a top contender, this video shows you why they should have never let the Philadelphia 76ers trade for James Harden. Right before that, just 9.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeflowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Against the Clippers in LA, Embiid and Harden combined for 56 points as the Embiid combo continues to dominate. Philadelphia is in the process of getting their chemistry right on and off the floor before the real season tips off during the playoffs, which kick off in a matter of weeks. In terms of the results for the Doc Rivers-led ball club as of late, at Wells Fargo amidst Philly's most recent five-game homestand, the Sixers faced all teams well above 500 and went 3-2 and two over that stretch, taking wins against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Dallas Mavericks, as well as the number one seeded Miami Heat without James Harden. With that said, James was healthy during the team's two home losses throughout that homestand to the Denver Nuggets and my hometown Toronto Raptors. But the Sixers kicked off their road trip the right way on Wednesday, taking down the Lakers, and in their LA doubleheader on Friday, this new look Philly team continued to resemble a top contender. The Sixers put on a 1 through 48 minute clinic, responding to the scrappy Clippers energy with a steady diet of powerful offensive action revolving around their 1 2 punch, leading to a 21 point halftime lead. Harden had 29 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists to lead the way. Embiid posted 27 points and 10 rebounds. Matisse Thibel added 13 points, and Tobias Harris had 12. Tyrese Maxey did have 11, but he shot just 4 for 11 from the field. The Nets needed to move on from James, and Brooklyn's been playing solid since their 3-17 stretch, so in no way am I saying they shouldn't have fulfilled the Beard's trade demand. All I am saying is, they shouldn't have traded him to a conference rival, a team in the Philadelphia 76ers who Brooklyn could very well see in the first round. While we've yet to see anything from Ben Simmons, who's now sidelined with a lower spine injury, James Harden's teamed up with likely the top MVP candidate and created the most efficient two-man lineup in the NBA. These numbers I'm about to show you were as of March 21st, so I'm not sure how they hold up after Philly's last three wins over Miami and the LA teams, but before that, Joel Embiid and James Harden were a plus 89 in 295 minutes together. They had a 122.5 offensive rating, a 105.7 defensive rating, and a 16.9 net rating with a 63.2% true shooting mark. All four of those stats would rank number one in the association. Right here in transition, for some reason, no Clipper wing defender puts a body on Harden, forcing Ivica Zubats onto him, who the beer takes for a tango dribbling behind the back once to stop on a dime, but watch this insane dribble combo that follows, one crossover to his right, then a hesitation between his legs to the left to get Zubat's think and drive to the basket, then repeats that combo, faking the drive for a second time before gathering and utilizing a fundamentally sound 1-2 step shot while stepping back. People complain about it being a travel, but how Harden's able to keep his balance, bait his matchup with hesitation dribble combos, that's what actually creates all the space he gets for that patented iconic step back shot. It's not the fact that he's traveling. But thankfully, if you're a Clipper fan, the next play, Nick Batum actually picks up the beard as he crosses half court, and utilizing the same behind the back dribble he showed off on his last bit of isolation scoring showmanship, this time with Batum pressing up, Harden simply crosses over to his right, takes the Frenchman to the basket, drawing the contact for a beastly and one. We'll get back to the bucket getting, but something that can't be glossed over in Harden's bag is the man's facilitating. As you can see on these four opening quarter possessions against the Cavaliers, he's amazing at reading when elusive traps are coming from opposing defenses at the back end of possessions and hitting the open man with video game-esque accurate passes. After setting up his teammates, the opponent's game plan naturally shifts towards giving James a bit of extra space, 
but that just allows James to size up his defender and go to work like he does right here, despite Seti Osman draped all over him. That was great defense from Seti, but Harden's natural-born scoring gets it done. The man's just sensational. Following a few more possessions of finding Embiid in the post, and then Tyrese Maxey in the corner for an open three, right here after coming off a screen, Harden fakes like he's going to dish it off yet again, but instead, with Mobley switched onto him, James hits him with one simple hezzy and shows off that he's a mismatch expert by draining the shot in Mobley's face. That ability to manufacture open space off the dribble and then hit perimeter shots is something Philadelphia's offense massively lacked when Ben Simmons was running the show. The inside and out mix of Harden's wizardry off the bounce and ability to space the floor with a three ball, whether it's after a few dribbles or merely spotting up, combined with the finishing, polish slash beastly post scoring and elite defense of Embiid has made these two one of the best duos in the association right off the bat. Taking into account we haven't seen anything from the man Philadelphia received Harden in exchange for, meaning Ben Simmons, that makes this a monumental trade steal for Daryl Morey, at least up to this point. We all know the first team all defender in Ben Simmons could come back, regain form, and even start hitting three pointers like we're in another universe, but how much longer are we actually going to expect that to happen? Regardless, in the interim, Joel Embiid just added Harden's step back three to his offensive repertoire. Nets GM Sean Marks, as good as he's been, maybe could have looked for something else other than the inactive and dramatic Ben Simmons in return for a former MVP and Simmons being out while more and more fake beards fly off the concession stands in the city of brotherly love goes to show why Sean Marks should have never let the Sixers acquire Harden. We also can't forget about the pieces Marks didn't get back in return for James. I think he could have negotiated for Maxi or Thibel, but instead, Sean let Philly keep two players who would fit perfectly next to a high volume shot creator, while of course giving them Harden. I know Seth Curry went the other way, he's exceptional, we talked about him in my Nets video, but I think you could have got more than that. Anyways, Matisse Thibel is currently fourth among all players in steals per game, and in my opinion with his strength, passing lane instincts, and overwhelming wingspan, the Sixers glue guy deserves a spot on the all defensive first team. Thibel's also starting to turn around his season offensively after suffering through inconsistent shooting stretches throughout a lot of the season. In the month of March, the former Washington Husky in Matisse is making a very solid 46% of his two three-point attempts per night. You'd of course like to see Thibel average more than six points per game, but for the defensive phenom that he is, that almost makes up for his lack of bucket getting. Plus, it's not like Philly needs more scoring than they've already got with four lethal weapons in Maxi, Harden, Tobias, and Embiid in their starting five. While you need a bit more scoring outside of those four, for the most part, you need role players who can fill in the team's other gaps, and that's exactly what Thibel does, and that's why I referred to him earlier as the team's glue guy. Two shoutouts next video, but in the Sixers' final nine regular season games. What's their record in those games? Best answer down in the comments gets up on the Community Speaks board and competes for NBA merchandise being given away on June 21st. So leave your take on today's question. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next video.